for this week's clinical file, we have Heather, and Heather is preparing discharge plans for a patient with a C8 spinal cord injury. Based upon the general guidelines for wheelchair accessibility in the home, which of the following is not recommended? So we have A, ramp slope at 1 to 12 ratio. Um, B is ramp width at 32 inches. We have C, which is door width at 34 inches. We have D, which is ramp landing platform at five by five feet squared. All right, y'all heard me kind of stumble with that A. Doesn't mean it's the right answer or the wrong answer. I don't know, for some reason when I was reading it, I was like, ramp slope at one to, am I saying that right? One to 12 ratio? Okay, sounds good, cool. Let's go up to the top of the question. We have Heather is preparing discharge plans for a patient with a C8 spinal cord injury. Pretty straightforward, right? Patient is discharging from someplace, whether it's inpatient, we don't know, it's not important, but the patient has C8 spinal cord injury. I don't really think that this has much to do with the question, to be honest with you, as far as whether we're gonna choose one answer over the other. So I'm not gonna entertain C8 spinal cord injury very long, all right? Um, like I typically do. I think it's outside the scope of this question. Um, as we continue down, it says, based on the general guidelines for wheelchair accessibility in the home. Ooh, okay, hold on a minute. So based upon general guidelines for wheelchair accessibility for the home or in the home. So I'm thinking about that and I'm like, all right, if they're talking about general guidelines, what are they really speaking about? What are they asking me for? And the first thing that comes to my mind is ADA guidelines for home accessibility for wheelchairs, which has a lot to do with maybe the door width or the ramp length or the ramp width, all, all those different things to make sure that your house is both accessible outside and inside, okay? So that's what we're thinking about, ADA requirements. So it says, which of the following is not recommended? And I really wanna give some weight to that because a lot of us get questions wrong because we forget that the question was, it was like a negative based question. It was a question that's asking you which of the following is not recommended. In a lot of cases, you'll get a question that's saying most or best or recommended. But this one is saying which of the following is not recommended. So keep that in mind. So for those of you on the podcast, let me go through the answer choices again. A was ramp slope at one to 12 ratio. Uh, we got B, which is ramp width at 32 inches. We have C, which is door width at 34 inches, and D, which is ramp landing platform at five by five feet, feet squared. So let's go ahead up to A, ramp slope at one to 12 ratio. Okay, so this is one of the ones I remembered a lot in school. Uh, we talked about this quite a bit when we were going over wheelchairs and so forth, that the, there was a ramp slope. And I always remember that the ramp slope needed to be 4.8 degrees, right? They harped on that. There was a question about that on my freaking exam at PT school. I remember, and you had to remember that little decimal, like 4.8 degrees. So just so your knowledge in the future, that also could be used. 4.8 degree slope or a 1 to 12 ratio. So what does that really mean? For every inch of rise of your ramp, you need 12 inches of run. Let me say that again. For every inch of rise, we have 12 inches of run. And that is the normal way in which we construct a ramp. We want our, our slope to be 4.8 degrees or at one to 12, which is for every inch of rise, there's 12 inches of run. I love the ratio. I would recommend that as a physical therapist to whomever I'm speaking to um, who's developing the ramp. So I like that. I would recommend it. Remember, the question is saying, which of the following would you not recommend? So I'm gonna go ahead and put an X next to it because I would recommend. Okay, let's go down to the next answer. B says ramp width 32 inches. Hmm. So now we're talking about ramp, not, we're not talking about ramp length, we're talking about ramp width, 
All right. And when I think about that, there is going to be a certain, you know, amount that we need in order to be compliant with ADA guidelines. Can you remember what that is? All right. That answer is 36 inches, actually. That's the minimum amount of width for a ramp if it is compliant with ADA guidelines. So the ramp width needs to be at least 36 inches or greater in order to be compliant. In this answer choice, it says ramp width 32 inches. So already I'm looking at this one like, no, I would not recommend it. And so, hmm, that's exactly what the question's asked for. It says, which of the following is not recommended? I wouldn't recommend 32 inches because the minimum is 36. I'm gonna put a check mark next to it for now, but let me go down to the remainder answer choices and see if there's a better answer choice. So C says door width 34 inches. Okay, let me play with this one a little bit. Now we're talking about inside the home, the door width or the front door and possibly, right? What is that door width need to be? What is the lowest level? What is the least amount of inches is what I'm asking you. You should be saying, all right, door width should be at least 32 inches or greater in order to be compliant with ADA requirements. The answer choice says door width of 34 inches. We're all good here. We're compliant. I would recommend this. So what I'm going to do is put an X next to it because, again, the question is asked for which one is not recommended. Let's go down to D. D says ramp landing platform of five by five feet squared. Okay. So let's back up a little bit because I actually didn't know much about this. You know, when I was going to take the NPTE, I mean, I was trying to memorize all these freaking numbers and how big the wheelchair is and the ramps and all this stuff. And one of the ones I kind of missed out on, I, I didn't look at this too much, is this thing called a ramp landing platform. Let me explain. So the ramp landing platform um, is a resting area typically that a, that a person using a wheelchair can use before they continue up a ramp. All right, so just picture this for a moment. You're in a wheelchair, you're going up a ramp, right? You have to go a certain distance, obviously. Um, but there's going to be a certain distance before the person obviously will start to get tired. And if they don't have special equipment on the wheelchair, if they stop moving, they may start sliding backwards. It might become a safety risk and so forth. So we need this ramp landing platform to give the person an opportunity to rest or recover before they continue up the ramp. Does that make sense? So that's known as a ramp landing platform. It might even be called a rest area platform. The question is, well, how big does that need to be? That's the question for you. And so what I want you to put down in your notes right now is that having a platform that's 60 inches by 60 inches or five by five feet, that's the same thing, same thing, if you convert inches to feet or feet to inches, it's either 60 inches by 60 inches or it's five feet by five feet. You want five feet of length, five feet of width, that gives you the five by five feet squared. So the question to you is, is D the correct answer or is it the incorrect answer? Is D something I would recommend or I wouldn't? Let me read it to you again. It says ramp landing platform at five by five feet squared. The answer to that is yes, I would recommend this. However, the question's asking what would I not recommend? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put an X next to D because that can't possibly be the right answer. So I go up and down looking at the most likely answer and I'm left with B as in boy, ramp width of 32 inches. Congratulations to those of you who got this question correct. This is obviously one of those numbered ones. Um, and when I say that, I'm talking about the ones that have just a bunch of numbers that you got to kind of memorize and so forth. And so it could kind of be tricky. But I'm telling you, the ones that we went over today are so important for you to know about wheelchairs and ramps and so forth. The ramp slope, 4.8 degrees. Don't forget that. It's also for every inch of rise, we got 12 inches of run. 
also known as the 1 to 12 ratio. We talked about the ramp width and how that needs to be at least 36 inches. It can be greater, but at least 36 inches. All right. Now, door width, we talked about that. A lot of people get hung up and they start saying things like 28 inches or 30 inches. Actually, the minimum door width is 32. So anything more than that is great, but it needs to be 32 at least. And finally is that ramp landing platform. Hopefully I gave you a bit of an understanding, more of a, a visual picture as well as I was explaining it as to what a landing platform is. But just remember that 60 inches by 60 inches or five by five feet. And that is the space that the patient is going to use to rest. There you go. For those of you on the podcast, I don't want to leave you with that. I won't leave you with it. I created a cheat sheet as a, just a quick reminder of some of these numbers. I added in some basic stuff about the wheelchair and going into the home and those specific things. But I also added in there the information I talked to you all about today with the ramps and specific things you need to know. It would be a great cheat sheet to look at right before you know, you're know you going into your MPTE or the days leading up to it just to get that little refresher. So for those of you on the podcast, with you on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you're at right now, go into the show notes, click the link in there and you can get it. 